My name's Matthew. This is my 36 foot sailboat Gudgeon. Uh, I've been living on her about three years now. I never touched a sailboat before I bought and moved on to this one, which if you read anything about buying sailboats is 100% what, not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to like look at a bunch, but this was the first one I saw and uh, I just bought it and moved on and uh, so far I touched wood. Uh, I got pretty lucky. I decided to live on a boat because originally I think I was just needing a change, feeling a bit out of control with my life and stuff, and I just needed something that was mine kind of thing, a space that was my own. Uh, it, it could have quite easily been a van or a tiny home or something. I have a friend called Phil. He bought a 27-foot boat and sailed to Australia in it. Two years I sat at work at my cubicle looking at pictures of Phil swanning around the South Pacific Islands and I was like, you bastard. That played into it and I really like fishing as well, so I wanted to go fishing kind of thing. And then it turned out I really like sailing when I tried it, so that was that was a plus. So this is this is Gudgeon. Um with my anchor there. Uh, kind of oversized but I I like having an oversized anchor. Uh, this is my my dinghy. It's it folds up flat so I do it for stanchions it actually opens up into something like that green boat there so these are solar panels um 200 watt solar panels that generate most of my power when i'm away um i'm actually going to add probably 200 to 400 more that should keep me pretty pretty good i'm pretty all my stuff's pretty low power usage like the refrigerator and stuff is is very low power so this is the ac system this side it plugs in through shore power over out there and it basically controls these power outlets here uh, and then an electric water heater and the battery charger and that's it everything else is 12 volt um, so I can only use this when I'm at shore and plugged in as soon as I go off the dock and stuff I'm on 12 volt uh, which is all of this stuff basically um, I installed this all myself this panel and things so these are all my nav lights like uh, anchor lights spreader light four deck light and stuff and then uh, got things like home electronics the internet uh, radar bilge pump stereo my water pressure system etc um, that's all 12 volt and for electronics and things like chargers I, ha I try and use 12 volt chargers for everything um, a lot of stuff comes with like a like a AC plug but with a converter so you can just cut that off and then turn it into 12 volt kind of thing so I try and do that as much as possible uh, normally I have lifelines here but they're getting refitted right now um, entering Swift Shore which is a big yacht race in two weeks and so I'm up having to upgrade all my safety stuff. This is my nav station. Um, basically, I, everything is combined there, like radar, um, GPS, moving maps and stuff. In the cockpit, it's, it's a pretty small cockpit for a boat this size, but I kind of like it. That's part of parts of the boat, and my batteries are also under there. I have 220 amp-hour batteries uh, connected in parallel to make a big bank of 240 for my house power, and then I have a separate starter battery of about 80 amp-hour kind of thing and they're connected so if one bank dies I can run everything off one of the other banks kind of thing. Uh, yeah so Gudgeon is a 37 year old sailboat, she's a 1980 Cherubini designed hunter sailboat, one of the first hunters that was built, um, designed by John Cherubini who's a pretty famous sailboat designer and she's 36 foot, uh, 37 years old and still kicking. This Dodger is canvas uh, and knackered, so I want to replace it with a fiberglass one. Uh, canvas tends to degrade in UV and things, and I just want I just want a hard one really. Then I can put more solar panels on top. Uh, yeah, and just more resilient. So, so this is my kitchen or galley, as I guess it's called. Um, this oven, this is, has an oven, um, a two burner stove, uh, which runs off propane. Um, unfortunately I only have a six pound propane bottle so I somehow have to figure out how to increase that because that's not very much. One of the things I'm doing is I'm actually upgrading my battery bank to a lithium battery bank of 400 amp hours which I'm having to build my own battery management system for and all that good stuff but that means I'll be able to run the um, kettle off an inverter because right now as soon as I go away from AC power it doesn't work right so I have to boil all my water using the, uh, the propane stove, which is a propane. I have all my dishes here, and then this is what is known as the cupboard of doom, because it has all my stuff in there that I can't fit in otherwise, and it's a pain to get to, and every time I go through a storm or something, it all gets jumbled around, and it's a huge pain. Uh, propane sniffer, um, I have two sniffers, one under the actual uh, oven, and then I have one below the actual propane in the locker over there. I installed these myself. Uh, 
they're pretty useful. Um, this knife rack is <laughs> less useful and I have to remember to take the knives off before I go sailing, otherwise knives fly across the cabin which makes the entire trip a lot more exciting than it should be. Uh, but it's, it's good for when I'm in dock. This is my EPUB, which is an emergency device. Uh, if I get in trouble, it sends out an automatic distress signal on satellite and kind of thing. I have my radio here, VHF radio. I've got single sideband marine radio, which uh, the VHF is good for people up to about 30 miles, and then the single sideband, depending on the atmospheric conditions and stuff, and which we can see, can go up to like 3,000, 4,000 miles kind of thing. Um, I really like playing with it and listening to ham radio channels. I've got a stereo, a portable marine radio. This is part of a self-steering self device I'm building from scratch. It's like, kind of like an autopilot, but it doesn't use any electricity. It just uses the angle of the wind, which adjusts a, a trim tab. So that's work in progress. Um, my electrical panel, um, my life raft is actually under the, the seat there. A lot of these things are not essential for just living aboard kind of thing, but I actually plan to leave next year and try and sail around the world. So I'm pretty much up trying to upgrade everything to offshore standard kind of thing, which is taking a long time, a lot of money, but it'll be worth it when I don't die. Getting rid of a lot of stuff was one of the main things I wanted to do when I moved onto a boat. And uh, this is everything I own in the world. Like I don't have a storage locker or, a, or I got rid of my car last year, now a bike everywhere. Um, so originally when I moved, I left it to the last minute, so it was a, lot, a huge rush trying to get rid of everything, so I got a storage locker and just shoved stuff in there. And then for the next year I went through and slowly like moved stuff out and things, and now I'm pretty much just left with this, of which most of which is tools. Without trying to sound too cheesy about it, like getting rid of all my stuff really was one of the best things. Um, I just feel less anxious about things, because all my stuff is, just, I just know where everything is, right? And I don't know, it just play, preys on your mind if you have too much stuff, I think. This is kind of the, the living area um, where I spend a lot of my time. Uh, this is part of the same self-steering device. I've got to plane that down into an uh, aerofoil, which I've been putting off because it's going to be really difficult. So um, We've got some tools up here. In here is my, all my safety gear, like uh, gloves, um, black jacket, etc. Um, emergency torch and then here we have a fridge freezer which I installed so this is my fridge uh, total bachelor fridge right now there's a bottle of gin uh, some tonic and a carton of milk and then I have a freezer on this side uh, which is really useful because when I go out if I catch fish when I'm traveling around it's great to be able to put in there it's a uh, Engel, it's they use it on four wheel drives in Australia, so it's very rugged. Um, you can actually see there's a big dent in the floor where I didn't strap down the fridge freezer when I first got it very well. So, first time we got into a bit of a storm, the whole thing went flying across the cabin, but it still works, so it's all good. Um, there's more tools up here. All oh, this has storage space behind them, by the way. This is all storage, um, and then this is my diesel heater which I installed on my first winter on the boat. Uh, it runs on diesel, which is, runs off a, a gravity tank, which is behind here, um, which is transferred by fuel pump switch. So I can fill up the gravity tank and then it, the diesel, it, there's enough uh, diesel in the gravity tank to run this for about two days. Um, it's, it's very efficient. It, heats up the cabin really well. It just takes about an hour and a half to get going. Um, in winter, I don't tend to run it unless I have company because the little flame on the front is really nice and atmospheric, or if it gets really cold, I run it. Otherwise, I just tend to use a space heater. This is the bathroom or head as, uh, as it's called. So this is actually a composting toilet. Um, I actually removed all the standard marine toilet uh, like the holding tank and stuff because most boats have like a holding tank where all the sewage gets flushed into kind of thing and then you either pump it out at the dock or something or if you're offshore you can discharge it. I read a lot of stories of those breaking and then raw sewage flushing around in the bilge and stuff and I was like I don't really want that. So this is a composting toilet and that 
The urine gets diverted into the front there and all the solids go into the main bit where there's peat moss or coconut coconut shells kind of thing and that dries it out and uh, that works really well. There's no smell and stuff and it's it's super easy to clean and things because it's basically two containers. Um, I have to change the solids about once every six weeks and then the liquids probably every two days kind of thing. But So I actually have a hot water tank uh, which heats water for me. It's electric but it's also heated to the engine. So it is either heated up when I'm plugged in on shore power or if I've been running my engine the, uh, the coolant goes through a heat exchanger and warms up the the thing. Uh, so I have pressure water so I can just turn on the tap and hear the pump in the background. Um, my drinking water, I have a little drinking water tap here and that's, uh, that's I'm kind of paranoid so that actually runs through three filters down to like 0.2 microns I think. So it's actually cleaner than any tap water I've ever had. Uh, the All the other water just goes through one, one filter which is about I think five microns. So it's, it's very clean water. Uh, I either get it from the dock or if I'm traveling I have like a rain a rain catch I can put out for when it rains. Which around here you know does a lot. So, And then this is the V-Buff where I tend to sleep. Um, my clothes are on the side here and things. Um, there's a spare sail below there. I've got to find a better place for that but as, as I go I'm still like refitting stuff. I made these curtains myself. When I bought the boat originally it was pretty uh, pretty bare bones, like the bones were solid um, but it needed a lot of uh, TLC and things and I just needed to upgrade stuff. Like it didn't really have much so I had to add the heater. All these are stainless steel and glass, they're all new, the windows. Um, redid the electrical system, like I pulled out every wire and rewired it from scratch. I did a new electrical panel. I redid all the rigging and stuff. Um, I uh, redid all the bilge, the bilge plumbing, and redid all the actual plumbing and things. I did an electric pump. Basically, if it wasn't part of the hull, it's probably been been overhauled. So, part of that is me being kind of anxious about stuff like that and not trusting it until I have laid my hands on it. Um, I have my pilot's license, and when I was learning to fly planes, uh, I had an engine failure of the plane, which meant we had to crash into a swamp near Pitt Meadows. So I think that kind of uh, made me nervous about stuff that I didn't personally refit myself. Yeah, for, for power, I have two sails. It's a sloop rig, so I have a main, a main sail and a foresail. I have a 115. If someone wanted to live on a sailboat, I'd probably advise them to do a lot of reading. Um, there's a couple of really good books by Don Casey called Inspecting the Aging Sailboat um, and another book called Good Old Boat. If you read through both of those, you'll have a pretty good knowledge of what you're in for kind of thing. Another good idea is that you can, if you want sailing time, you can go to the yacht, local yacht clubs. Um, like the one here has uh, races every Wednesday night and they're always looking for crew. You can just go down and volunteer there and stuff and you'll be taken on and given some sailing experience kind of thing. Um, also I guess just just go for it. Just, just find a decent boat, you know, not too expensive and just, uh, just go for it. I wish I'd done this years ago. Um, the, free, the freedom to travel and stuff and also just have my own space. I can live really cheaply as well. My living expenses, including mortgage, which is kind of pricey. Mortgage is about 600 a month, which is pretty pricey. Um, but all the rest of my living expenses are probably an extra 500 on top of that. So I'm living for about one, just over a thousand a month kind of thing. Um, I bike everywhere. I got rid of my car, um, which is another great decision I made, I think. Um, especially around here in Victoria. Um, you know, 